right, guys, welcome to the Street Cop Training Podcast. We are back again for the second week in a row. This is episode number two of this session between me, Dennis Benito, I'm the founder of Street Cop Training, and Zach Miller is an instructor with our company, a legal expert in Fourth Amendment search and seizure. We're glad to have him. As I say always, to everybody I meet, Zach Miller is a blessing for this company. Without further ado, we're going to get to this week's topic with Zach. And the first thing we're going to start with is the automobile exception and some things regarding the automobile, keeping people in cars. Can you search people when you develop probable cause? And we have enough time to go into Arizona v. Gantt in this episode. So introducing Zach Miller. Zach, go ahead and take it away. Let's go into probable cause to search a car okay. and extending it to passengers in a vehicle and your position. And I'm going to jump in here. We didn't have a lot to talk about prior to getting into this podcast episode, but I was just in Kentucky. There's an interesting piece of case law there regarding canine alerts and what they said. So I'll bring that up to you uh, as we go along. Go ahead. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to lead right into what we're talking about. So we got probable cause to search the car. Uh, and it doesn't really matter what the source of that probable cause is. Is it a canine alert? Um, maybe you smell marijuana or you see something in the car that gives you probable cause to search the car. Um, under the automobile exception, we're good on that. We covered that last week. So what about the occupants? Can can I search the occupants? And uh, the, the, the answer is no. The, the probable cause to search the car by itself uh, is not probable cause to search the occupants. Uh, you need an occupant, a person is a separate constitutionally protected area um, of a vehicle is in effect. That's one area. Uh, but to search a person, you need probable cause to, that's particularized to them. Uh, and just because you have probable cause to search a vehicle doesn't necessarily mean you have probable cause to search the person. Now, I'll talk about Ann Chondo here in, in just a second and, and the cases that. Um, tend to follow in Chondo, but the leading U.S. Supreme Court case on this is a case from 1948 called United States versus D. Ray, um, and that was a case where um, they had probable cause to search the car uh, for evidence of uh, one of the guys had illegal, illegally obtained gas rationing coupons uh, in his possession, and one of the questions in this case was, well, does that mean you also have probable cause to search there was other occupants in the vehicle uh, probable cause to search them as well and the court said no uh, the automobile and it specifically talked about the automobile exception said the automobile exception does not extend to people uh, you need a, a, a particularized probable cause to search the people so it's not an automatic 